Hi, I'm Jake from Northside Custom Crafts and it's time for 2018 Shop Tour. Here we go. Hey! The purpose of this shop tour is to show you how much difference you can make in only a year. Now, I did a shop tour in February of 17 and I'll put a link to it up there. You can go check it out and then watch this one and you can see how much difference was made in a year. And so what I'm gonna do is go over to the, the front door and just work my way around the shop and talk about things as they come along. So here we go. Right as you walk in the front door, the first thing you're gonna come to is the Grizzly two horsepower dust collector with the Oneida Super Dust Deputy. And I also have the Oneida, the dust entry on it. That thing saved me more than once. It lets you know when, you're, when your barrel's full and keeps you from messing up the shop. And also having this close to the door, when I do have a full bag or overfill it, I'm right next to the door instead of filling my whole shop up full of, full of dust that gets created. And uh, we have a whole, C, a whole uh, dust collection video on the CFM and the before and after we did all the, the changes to it. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description below. And then right here you have the Grizzly slide and table saw attachment and it's not on the saw, it's over here. And when we get over to the saw, I'll talk about it a little bit more. It's so moving on. So the first thing you have right past the dust collector is the Supermax 1938 drum sander. I love this thing. The reason why I put it right here is because it creates a ton of dust and I figured the shortest amount of run you have to it, the, the better the dust collection would work. And turns out I was correct about that. And then you have the Porter Cable 6 inch joiner and then the, the DeWalt 13 inch planer and I just move these, I just move these back and forth whenever I'm using them and it, it works out pretty good as it is but eventually I want to have freestanding machines and I can do away with this table and it'll create a lot more space. So now above this table I have my Australian rugby flag that was sent to me from Sumo's project and then I have the English football flag sent, me, sent to me from Jamie Page. And that's the cool thing about YouTube is you get to make friends from all over the world. You're right at, at each other's fingertips. So that's a pretty cool thing. And uh, hopefully I'll get to fill the shop up some more this year. So moving on from this table, we're gonna go to the sanding table. So coming over here to the sanding table, I have the rigid oscillating spindle sander and belt sander. This thing comes in handy for a lot of things and I don't regret buying this one one bit. And then I made this downdraft table for sanding on and it comes in handy. It'll even, I made these, um, these things to cover up some of the holes if you want to get the suction condensed down into one spot. It'll even hold the material down for you. But the, the more I do this stuff, I think that a sander with a good dust extraction on the sander itself is better than this and then I can use this space better probably to make this into a router table and put drawers on it and everything and, and get rid of this table also. And I'll show you what I have for a router right now. I have this Bosch router table. You get it from the big box stores and it's, and it's fine but every time I want to use it I have to put it up here and it blows material all over the shop and I, I just think that I could do a better job than that and I think that's going to be the the change this year that I'm going to make is I'm going to step up the router game and make some improvements to this and and make everything better. Now coming over here I have the drill press and to, to be honest I don't I don't really even use it that much that's why I shoved it in this corner and I got the drill bits over here and that's that's where all the drill bits and anything having to do with drilling goes over here. So here's my bandsaws. When I first started in this woodworking, I was that's exclusively who worked with bandsaws and cutting out shapes and everything. And then when I wanted to do bigger things, I'd have to change a blade or I would try it with a smaller blade and I'd break the blade. So I bought another one just like this one for resawing and this one's for shapes. Now, the thinking behind it is you could buy more expensive bandsaws <laughs> that are different name brands or you could buy two of these. So I went with two of these and I really don't regret it. Sometimes I don't use them that often anymore, but when I need them, I really need them and they come in handy. So here's my Grizzly hybrid table saw. I really like this machine and any future upgrades will probably be to the dust collection. Probably put a, a pipe on there with 
you know a shroud underneath the blade and, and make it go straight to the dust collection that'll probably be a future upgrade but other than that i have no complaints out of it now we talked about that sliding table saw attachment earlier and i made a video on putting that on and i've amended the video in the comments that i'm not going to bash that particular tool but it's just not for me so i made this this uh, outfeed table for that sliding table saw and i'm going to show you that so before i removed the sliding table saw attachment it used to ride right in this hole right here and one handy thing is when you're making a i, I left the table this way because one handy thing is when you're doing um cutting board you're batching out cutting boards and you get to the end of the board and it's and it's really not the size you want you just throw it off in here and then next thing you know you get all the scraps underneath here and then you you make a pretty cool cutting board out of scraps and i'm going to show you one of those so here's a cutting board i made entirely out of scraps it's two inches thick you've got rounded edges and feet on it it turned out pretty well and it's totally out of what came out of that hole right there and this will be raffled off at Make-A-Wish this year. Last year, we raffled off a cedar chest and was able to donate a bunch of money to Make-A-Wish. Uh, we do Make-A-Wish every year. I love doing that, and I'm gonna continue doing that for as long as I can. I'm gonna try to find some way to do raffle for people that are watching this too, so we can get some early, early sales going on it and see how much money we can donate. And I'll let you know in the next shop update or something, I can iron out all the details in that. So moving on. So here's my modified J Bates miter saw station. Hold on a second, I'm a week behind. Now, here's my miter saw station that was modified from J Bates plans. I can't say enough about this. This was a whole game chamber changer for the whole shop. Um, so what I do in all my videos is I put a link to his plans down there so you can go buy his plans. They're the easiest thing in the world to follow. And I think the thing that held me back from making this in the first place was that I thought I could come up with something, something different. And I watch his videos and there's nothing else I wanted in a miter saw station. So I just bought the plans and did it and it was easy. There was a lot of first for me on this. I never made a drawer or put sliders in or, or there's a whole bunch of things that I was new at when I did this and it turned out pretty good so the plans are an awesome thing and then above here is my football football boxes and you keep track of your your teams and I think one thing that might be happening in this upcoming season is I think the other two are going to stay and this one will switch every year so um, somebody else wants to send me another flag it's already lined up I'm going to I'm gonna change the, the logo and change out the flag and then put the, that flag up on the wall somewhere. And then every year we could switch out and then have another team up there. So let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Hey, what do you know? I found a TARDIS. That's weird. Yeah, this is my last project. Uh, I'll put a link to it up here. Check it out. It a pretty, this was a pretty cool thing to make, and it's just not here. I have a couple little things left to do to it, and then it's going to get delivered when the weather's better here in Texas. The, the clamp rack I made that's mobile usually sits right here, and here it is. So I'm probably going to make another one of these and keep putting more clamps on there because you can never have enough clamps. So here's where the clamp rack lives and then I can roll it anywhere I want and I'll go around and I'll show you the workbenches of what I've been doing with those lately. So here's the back of the TARDIS here's, and there's a clamp rack over here. So this workbench here, I just have miscellaneous wood. Like I have a tabletop right here and some little bit of pallet wood right here. Just some miscellaneous stuff that doesn't fit in with the other things. And my sharpening, my blade sharpening station right here. I have a vise and this table, I do all the glue ups here and I do the assemblies on here. That way the table that is the outfeed table for the table saw stays clear when I need to, to cut the next thing. I don't have it all cluttered up over there. Now these two tables over here, this is just all leftover stuff from the TARDIS. So that's, I didn't clean, I cleaned the floor for this video, but I didn't clean up totally. So you can, it's, it's like this almost all the time. So I, I keep all the sheet good storage down here. And then that table down there, is all cedar and hardwoods 
are stored down there. And then on top of that table, if I have sheet goods, I'll put them on that table out of the way. Right over here is the miter saw station and you move this way and we have the Laguna IQ CNC machine. Um, I love this thing. It's a pretty big expense up front, but you can immediately start making things for people, even $20 things, $10 things. You, it's fun to use and you can sell these things and you can start making your money back pretty quick. Now this thing right here is a three horsepower water cooled spindle. So if you have long runs or you're doing 3D art or whatever that has 10 hour runs on it, it's not gonna get hot, it's not gonna wear out. All you need to do is keep the, the threads on all the moving mechanisms, make sure they're lubricated and that's all you gotta do. This thing works, I love it. And in the next few weeks, I'll probably do a review on this thing. So moving on. So this is the crate that the CNC machine came in and it hasn't moved since last year because I like it and it looks cool. And I keep the camera equipment up here. I keep the radio up here and I keep pop tarts up here. Uh, I keep all the, the bits for the machine, everything that has to do with CNC machine or camera making equipment and pop tarts stays right here. And it works out pretty good. I'll probably change it in the future, make it more, more uh, useful, but for right now it, it works pretty well and in this corner over here that's where i keep everything for craft shows i can fit everything that for a 20-foot booth and all the products and everything in this corner it stays out of the way and it and it doesn't get dirty over here because the dust collection on the cnc machine works outstanding so right here's my lumber rack. When I go travel, I gotta travel to Lubbock to get hardwoods. When I bring them back, I'll set them up here for at least a couple weeks. And then whenever I go and cut them down and I have off cuts, that's when they go down to the tables. Until I cut them, or if, if they're five feet or, or longer, I can put them up here and I'll leave them up here. If not, they go down to the table. Um, up here is the mini split. It's a great air conditioner. It's not that great of a heater. And when we get to the end, I'll show you what I've been doing to heat the place when it's really cold. And right here on this, this little toolbox here has this regular mechanic tools. It's stuff that everybody should have in their house, wrenches, screwdrivers, pliers, stuff like that goes in here. Now this thing here doesn't have anything to do with anything. We blew up an engine one time and I used all the parts and made a funny character out of it. Moving on. So right here's the welder that I have. It's a Eastwood MIG 135 and it came with the VersaCut plasma cutter. They put those, they bundled those together so people on a budget can weld and I don't have any complaints out of them. That thing will weld stuff and that thing cuts stuff and um, it does just fine. If you're going to do it all the time, I'd probably go to a Lincoln or Miller or whatever. But this is what I have and it does me just great. I got a chop saw up here for metal, have a grinder up here for metal, and I have some handheld tools up here for metal. And this, this area here needs a lot of work, but as of right now, it does me just fine. And I'm looking forward to doing some metal work. So right here, I have all kinds of offcuts of metal. You can go to the scrap yard and buy cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. And I, and I just put it up here. Whatever I have left from projects, I put it up here and I forget about it until I have another project and then I come over here and find it. All of my finishing supplies for the woodworking is over here. My little triangle things and spray gun and, and stains and paints, and they're all right there. And how I paint in the shop is I get these carts. I have three of them. I just cover them in plastic and put them by the door, paint and I don't have any problem with it and the paint I'll just use some chemicals and get the paint off the overspray off the floor and it seems to work all right for me so moving on it just in the last month got cold as soon as I started building the TARDIS it got cold so I, I needed to come up with a solution real quick and and I came up with this if you're spraying chemicals or anything like that you don't want to use this but just to, to take the cool off the shop and then and then go on to working this thing works just fine it, it puts out a lot of heat, but like, like I said, you, wanna, you don't want to have it on too long because it, it does put out some fumes and everything, but for a short-term fix, it did all right for me. That's probably the only thing from last year that I really didn't tackle was the heating in the shop, but here we are, and I have an opportunity to do it again. 
As I'm making this shop tour, my buddy Sumo from Australia from Sumo's Projects is making his shop tour. It'll be a, his first one. So after you watch mine, go watch his. I'll put a card up there and I'll put a link in the description. There's plenty more to come on my channel. So subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time on the next build. Y'all be good. Is that all we can hear is dogs? Ooh. <laughs> Stupid dogs. The purpose of this shop tour is to show you how much difference you can make in a year. Now this shop has totally taken a transfer. Uh, transfer, that's stupid. Shut up, dogs! There we go.